Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth. Look around and where you live. Look at all the good you have to give. Give a little love yourself. There's a hand somewhere to hold, a mouth to feed. There's so much that we can do for so many who are in need. Give our time, give our wealth, give our love, give ourselves. No Allah sees each and every hidden deed. Give a little love yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Fiqh of Zakah. This topic, the Fiqh of Zakah, Zakah itself, is seen as a very important topic around the world, especially for the Muslims. Now many of you say, why? We know all about zakah, we've read all about it, 2.5% for this, 5% for this. Well, if you know that over 38 places in the Qur'an, zakah is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its own sense. Over 28 places in the Qur'an, zakah is mentioned with prayer. We know that all of the Muslims around the world, when it comes to Ramadan especially, they look at zakah. They have problems in calculating zakah. They want to look at what is zakah obligatory upon them, upon their family, upon their offspring. To discuss this and more, we have with us Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Jamil, and jazakallahu khairan. Barakallahu alaikum, Sheikh. When we look at the topic of zakah, I mentioned very briefly the importance of zakah. Truly, it is an important topic for the Muslim, Sheikh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa. وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَىٰ لَا سِيَّمَ الْمُصْطَفَىٰ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Indeed, a zakah is not just an important topic, rather it is the third pillar of the deen. In the sound hadith in which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, بُنِي الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَىٰ خَمْسِ Or Islam is built on five pillars. The third pillar was to give Zakah, to pay the due zakah to those who are entitled for it. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah, to offer the five daily prayers, to give zakah, to fast during the month of Ramadan, and to perform hajj if he can afford its means. Uh, unfortunately, because vast majority of the ummah are either poor or under poverty line, so not too many people really worry about the, the third pillar. They rather worry about whether they're entitled to receive a zakah fund or not. But many of us do not understand that things can change overnight. Somebody can start a business or inherit some wealth or, 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 or uh, get a good job. Then by the end of the year, he has what's called a nisab. Mm -hmm. So he's entitled to pay zakah. So, since it is a very important topic of our deen, everybody must be aware of it. Yes, there are certain things that we will discuss. Does not concern me because you're not a farmer. Mm -hmm. Does not concern me because not, I'm, a, I'm not a businessman. Or um, uh, others who are not in, 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 in the livestock business. But it is very important to have a, an idea. Then, if this part concerns you, then you should pay more attention to it. And as we know that uh, business people, particularly successful business people, they tend to have advisors mm -hmm. in uh, public relations, in business, business advisors, uh, in planning, etc. So why not have a, a religious advisor if you have such wealth, which is in millions? Mm -hmm. Many people brag about, I cannot even count my wealth. Mm -hmm. I have heard somebody who is extremely wealthy, a multi-millionaire, when he was asked about his wealth, he said, I don't know how much is it, because I cannot count it. You know what does it mean? It signifies that, that the person does not pay his zakah. Because <laughs> if you are one of those who pay their regular zakah, you must keep record. You must understand how much in your wealth is entitled for zakah. You cannot say, I don't know uh, how much do I own. So uh, this is very important to bring into light the importance and the significance of paying zakah because when we come to give the linguistic definition of the term zakah, 
you'll be amazed. Okay, okay. D let's start at the beginning then. Okay, zakah itself, it's a term which is misused sometimes. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's even abused by Muslims. Now, what is zakah linguistically, Sheikh? What do we see as this word zakah, Sheikh? Uh, every term in our religion has a linguistic definition, which is its origin, and an applied definition. And the applied definition would not differ much than the linguistic definition. Rather, it would be derived from it. Mm -hmm. The word zakah literally means as ziyada wa nama. As you just said, it's greatly misunderstood. Mm. When it comes to the zakah time, people are frightened and scared because I'm going to deduct, yeah. withdraw, withdraw from my account some money to give it to others, to the mm. poor, to the needy. So they think it's a decrease. Rather, the literal linguistic meaning of the word zakah, it's an increase. Subhanallah. It's growth and fostering. Mm. In Arabic they say, zakah zar'u wa nama. When the vegetations or the fruits or the plants grow up, so that it increased in size, in quantity. So as zakah literally means an increase. And basically, it provides a similar meaning in its religious or applied meaning. Zakah is the third pillar of the deen, which is a specific amount of money to be taken from the rich and to be given to the poor. So it is the right of the poor, you're not doing anyone any favor. So that myth about me losing money, by giving zakah, you know, people get scared, and we, you know, we all calculate the zakah. We say, okay, we try to persuade ourselves, unfortunately, that you know we've got enough, but really we do have enough, as you know. Um, but we get scared. We think, oh, that's it. You know, our provision is gone. Allah subhanahu wa taala is taking away from us. Uh, this is an incorrect way of looking at it. That's why we began by defining the zakah literally, because only when you get to understand the concept of zakah, you would not hesitate to give extra. You would not hesitate to tell your accountant, don't worry about it. If there is any confusion, give extra. Stay in the safe side. Because in one hadith, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has slaughtered a sheep. And he let Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, uh, distribute it upon the poor. Then when he returned home, he asked her, what did she do? She said, oh, it's all gone except for the arm or the shank. This is the part which Prophet Muhammad used to desire most of the sheep. And Nabi Sallallahu did not worry about what uh, part was saved for him. Rather, he said, Nay, O Aisha, rather, it's all been saved except for the part which you saved for us. Whatever you gave the poor, this is our saving. It's all been saved. And the part which you saved for us, this is what we're going to eat, digest and execute. So, whenever one is about to calculate his zakah, make sure not just remain in the safe side, give it with pleasure. Give it with delight and happiness. Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her, whenever, after the Prophet's demise, whenever somebody uh, would come to receive a charity from her, she would put a perfume on it. And she would say, Marhaban biman jaa yahmilu zadi ila al-jannah. She would welcome the beggar and the poor because she believed that this is the person who came to transfer her load and provision from this life into the hereafter. Welcome to the one who came to carry my provision to the hereafter. So only when we come to understand this concept and where the zakah is coming from, one will be very happy while he is giving the zakah. And he will treat the poor and those who are entitled for the zakah will treat them with the due respect. So from this what I can take, Sheikh, what you're trying to say, and correct me here, is that really the person who's given zakah, he's actually holding on to this for the person who owns it, the right guided person, the person who owns this property? Well, this is how it works. The position and the wealth of the rich is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In it, there is a right of some other people, mm -hmm. the poor. So, as zakatu haqqul faqir. It is the right of the poor. In the, uh, in, the, in the wealth of the rich people, 
And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, informed them that Allah has ordained a zakah on them to be taken from the rich of them and to be given to the poor of them. Every time there is a poor person who is struggling to make it, who is uh, hardly surviving, it is simply because there is some rich individual did not pay his due. There is a natural equilibrium that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in this universe. If everybody carries out what Allah the Almighty wanted from him, then everything will be in peace. Everybody will live in happiness. You know, nowadays when we talk about the ozone, mm -hmm. we talk about some disturbance in the climate, it is simply because we are creating that. We're building up some disturbance over years by consuming things that we should not be consuming, by, uh, by, by the exhaust, by the smoke, by... So, same thing, same mechanism. When the rich people are not doing their job and paying their zakat use, the zakat use by itself is sufficient to cover all the needs of the needy ones. So, now I've got it, this is a really good place to take a break, but just before we do take that break, let's just recap, basically... This is something that every rich person knows that part of his wealth, to purify his wealth, has to be given. This is something that the poor person needs to survive. And a society, what you're telling the sheikh, a society will live in peace and harmony. Everybody will live in a, an equitable state if only we, the people with the money who pass this nisab, give this money. Absolutely true. And as we go by, we will find out the hikmah of Allah the Almighty and His divine wisdom in stating the zakah rate, in particular wealth, uh, from uh, currency to gold and silver to cattle to livestock, etc. So that it will be taken from the, 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 the same wealth, for instance, if it is a livestock, to be mm -hmm. taken as cattle, sheep, goat, etc. So that the, the poor, when he sees the wealth of the wealthy people, would not envy them, because mm -hmm. he has a right in that. So he prays for them with barakah and a blessing. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in verse number 103 of Surah At-Tawbah, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ Listen carefully. خُذْ أَوْ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم Take. This is the right of the poor. مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ From their wealth and position which is zakatable which will be explained in details over the next uh, few episodes. Take the sadaqah, min amwalihim from the rich, sadaqah, charity. Why? Tutahiruhum wa tuzakihim biha. In order to purify them with it and to sanctify them as well. So the zakah uh, works both ways. It helps the poor and it purifies the rich's uh, wealth. And uh, also... Uh, gives him a blessing and an increase in his wealth and in himself. Jazakallah khair. As you can see, we've come to a good point to take a break. We're speaking about zakah, the third pillar of Islam. Please stay with us. We're going to go to a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Give a little love yourself. Cure your greed. Purify your wealth.